Greetings, welcome back to Astrologaster. Oh no, not you. Nothing's gonna shake sense with Thomas Black. How may I do your service this day? I must begin by thanking you for your previous service. Yes! Uh, for we did it. The previous reading you gave me was hard to hear. It was honest and true. It was so long Marion ago. Essex's pursuit of the Spanish treasure ships did not end well, so I Oh, hear. right, that. Though I am glad I was able to give you fair warning of it. As am I. A most lamentable affair that has cost me very dear. And I know not how, but my wife Alice has lately learned of our perilous financial situation. Ah, has she? Aye, and she has had me petition the Archbishop for a promotion. Ooh. It is her reckoning that if I were promoted to Bishop, the increased living would enable me to settle our debts. That would seem wise under the circumstances. And was your petition successful? It nope. was. What? Uh, at least at first. Indeed, His Grace did have me believe he is minded to make me Bishop of Salisbury. The Bishopric of Salisbury? But that is excellent well, is it not? It would be very well, forsooth. But many months have passed, and the Archbishop gives yet no sign of granting the vacant Bishopric to anybody. I see. And he does not say when the matter may be decided? Nay, indeed, he does not. Whenever I raise the question with his grace, he says he needs time to consider the various episcopal and doctrinal matters concerning such an appointment. All the while, he has me performing additional duties that I dare not refuse, lest I lose his favor. And Mistress Blag has sent him pies upon numerous occasions. And yet the Archbishop is not moved? Oh, he must be a very hard man indeed. For your wife's pies are well renowned for their powers of persuasion. Really? Let us see what the stars can tell us. Will Thomas Blagg, Dean of Rochester, be granted the Bishopric of Souls? No, he won't be. That we know for a fact. Blagg's relationship with Arch Archbishop will remain amiss amissable. Blagg will has demonstrated his godliness. Blagg's professional ambitions will be realized if he exercises patience. Wait, there's a deception concerning the theft of goods has been uncovered. God will help Black succeed by radically transforming the Archbishop's opinion of Black's intelligence. Thus raised in the Archbishop's esteem, Black will be granted the bishopic, which comes with a considerable increase in pay. Increase in pay. Black is advised to travel with his wife. No, you're doomed. Never be granted the bishopric of Salisbury, I fear. For the Archbishop has discovered some irregularities in the management of Rochester Cathedral. Some missing furnishings, I think? Well, I, I mean to say, if, uh, if indeed that be so, then tis most egregious. I will have some very stern words with my chaplain. Uh, Worry not, sir. The stars indicate that his grace would wish to avoid any unpleasantness. As is customary with church scandal, he will doubtless remain quiet on the matter for the sake of reputation. That sounds like it. Well, of course I too would not want to bring shame upon the church. If there be such vile, false rumors circulating about me, it would be wrong not to consider the attention that my promotion to bishop would invite. I own that I am shocked and disappointed by this, but I must thank you for forewarning me. You're welcome. But here it is, the letter of recommendation. Fifth one already. Not you again, I hate you.
Come on, come on, let's go. Ah, good morrow, Mr. Moore. How fare you this day? Forsooth, I fare very well. For I have become acquainted with the most wondrous of creatures. A lady who has lately been widowed. No. Ah, let me just take some notes here. Is this one dark or fair? Auburn with eyes of green, mayhap? I do not believe there's yet been an auburn-haired maid. Fie, Mr. Foreman. Prithee show more respect for ladies than to view them as mere collections of physical charms. Beauty alone is of nothing to a man such as I. Nay, sure. my heart does belong to a worldly woman of culture and learning. Her head almost as striking as the soft hair and radiant eyes that adorn it. I have no idea who's he Indeed, talking about. Her gift of understanding is so strong, she can listen to my sonnets for hours on end. Is she deaf? <laughs> Forsooth, the lady does show great strength of mind indeed. And how might I advise you? I would have you tell me whether I should marry her. For, as you know, I have offered my troth to ladies in the past, and it has not ended well for me. So, this time I did tell myself, Lancelot, you will proceed with caution. You will know the lady for at least a month before you think of wedding her, and then you'll go directly to Foreman for his counsel. Then let us consult the stars now. Should Lancelot Moore marry this wondrous and worldly widow? Hmm. Surely. Deceitful hidden motives are at play. Moore is allowing his emotions to rule his finances, putting them at risk by acting impatiently. The match would provoke an unexpected death, resulting in an inheritance. The widow is an intelligent woman who aspires to greatness through her relationship. God favors the marriage, it would make a man of more. The stars suggest I have cruel intentions towards my current Lancelot Moore. Well that that's not wrong, you know. <laughs> Let's see, this is just deception. Emotions, the reverse of patience, impatient. It was a surprising event. I think that may be it. You must not marry this lady, sir. I do hate him, though. a wealthy man, and she has designs upon your fortune that may result in your untimely death. <gasps> he got! Verily? I am afeard so. You must take care not to let your emotions lead you astray. But she seems so. She told me she... Are you sure? You did not put a planet in the wrong house or what not? Probably. I, quite sure. Oh, well indeed, tis most lamentable. Oh, what a waste of such fine eyes. Mayhap Emma has a sister. Maybe. But how are we doing? Oh. Close. Okay, but let's take Sybil, it's nearly there. Good day, Mistress Fortescue. I do hope you may help me, Dr. Foreman. I'll try. I am mightily afflicted with fever and pain. Yes, what did you eat this time? Your face is a trifle red in colour. When did your troubles begin? At a dinner party, perchance? Nay, it was at a luncheon. The one I gave this day. I sought to play a trick upon my friend, Lady Emma Dyer, and I worry God is punishing me for my japery. And what manner of jape did you play on your friend at this luncheon of yours? Pray, describe the ruse to me. Well, I came upon the idea when I took receipt of a trunk full of exotic goods from the New World. Of course. A lovely gift sent home to me by my gallant husband. Knew you of my husband, Captain Henry Fortescue? He is a great friend of Sir Walter Raleigh, of course. I, I think you have mentioned him once or twice, madam. The trunk contained a parcel of dried fruits. Full red in colour they were, and with them a note of warning. On it was writ that these fruits, if not consumed in moderation, can provoke a hot, pricking fever when ingested. Ah, yes. I have read of this fruit in the writings of Spanish explorers. Capsicum Icaramba Mequema is the botanical name, I believe. I am well known for serving the most original dishes at my table. 
Hence, my guests were not surprised when I invited them to try my exotic fruit. I served them each a sweet pie containing one of these uh, capsicum... I caramba mequima. But I made sure Emma received a pie containing the very largest fruit, and I the very smallest one. I see. You hoped to occasion a fever in your friend while escaping the same fate yourself. And yet this ruse did not succeed, I take it. Nay, it did not, Dr. Foreman. Most of my guests dared only take one bite of their pies before abandoning them, finding themselves unequal to the challenge. But Emma ate hers all up, as did I. I was sure I would be safe, and that she would turn red and begin to perspire most shamefully, but she remained as cool as a cucumber. But I... But you, madam? But I began to feel such pain in my mouth and throat. My face and eyes turned red. Moisture gathered on my brow and bosom, and damp marks appeared on my bodice. I could not conceal it from my guests. T'was humiliating. How distressing for you, madam. Let us now seek a solution to this mystery in the stars. You ate the wrong piece. <laughs> the current is experiencing a short-lived attack of last depressions, a condition that can occasionally bodily hit and blurish of her face. The current has been bewitched. The current is suffering from a kind of quincy caused by abundance of blood flowing to the head and throat, concussion, swelling, fever, and wetness in the face. What the? Really? Let's say it's this one, I guess. Oh, sorry. I consult that Spanish book I mentioned earlier. The one recounting travels in the new world. Ah, yes. That is interesting. What is interesting, Dr. Foreman? The stars say you have Quincy, and this book confirms my suspicions as to what provoked it. Madam, tis not the larger fruits that occasion pain when consumed. Tis the small ones, such as the one you had baked into the pie for yourself. You mean to say the smaller fruits are more dangerous than the larger ones? How strange! Verily, how topsy-turvy! The pain will be gone by the morrow, but in the meantime, you may find relief by washing your mouth out with wine. Burgundy wine? Or will an ordinary claret suffice? Any wine will do, madam. God give ye good even, Mistress Fortescue. And you give me your little recommendation. Yes! This is the... F which one? One, two, three... F fifth one? Sixth one. Okay. Nice. We're nearly there. I don't know. Good morrow, young sir. Ah, methinks this is your first consultation, uh, Mr. Um... Uh, hum Humphrey Bell, sir. And how may I do you service this day, Mr. Bell? I want to get lean in that. You wish to get lean, you say? And why would you need to be any leaner than you are now? You do not appear at all over plump. Indeed, you appear to be a young man in the full vigor of health. Okay. Hey, but I do the lady parts, though, innit? Uh, you do the lady parts. Oh, I see. You are a player who plays feminine roles upon the stage. Oh, okay. Oh, well, I guess I think I recognize you now. You play for Lord Chamberlain's men, do you not? The company of players led by Will Shakespeare, Richard Burbage, and Will Kemp, among others. Aye, sir. I play for them as a hired man, and next month I'm to play a fairy queen in a play we're doing for Lord Hunston at his daughter's wedding. But boss man Burbage says I'm too plump for the role. Humphrey, your girth does make it difficult for an audience to imagine you getting up out of your fairy throne, let alone flying. Hmm, yes, I think I understand. It would imperil the audience's suspension of disbelief, thus breaking the fourth wall. As you players so call it. Ah, sir, indeed. Mr. Burbage worries much for them scenery walls, for he says my rear end is of such a size, tis liable to smash right through him. Anyways, Mistress Burbage told me that to fit into her gown, she bids herself chunder after eating. Might you give me some herbs for that or something? 
And Mistress Burbage would be Richard Burbage's wife, I presume. Well, to judge what would be most effective in your case, I shall need to consult the stars. What should Mr. Humphrey Bell do to become leaner? I have no idea. Cut off his bosoms. Humphrey may provoke downward purging from his fundament by inducing an imbalance of phlegm. Humphrey may induce upward purging from his stomach by consuming canisico excrementum to induce an imbalance of color. Humphrey's condition has been provoked by chronic overconsumption of food. He must commit to underconsumption of food if he hopes to become leaner. Well, I suppose this one isn't completely no, since he is an actor and he may damage his throat, which he needs. I don't know whether this would work. No, I would go with this one and hope he does not faint in the middle of performing. If you would make yourself leaner, you have but to eat less. Uh, why would I need a doctor to tell me that though? I need something to do quicker than that, urgent like. Know you what I mean? Indeed. Sadly, I am familiar with the tendency of the young folk of this day to seek quick, easy fixes to their problems. What about Mistress Burbage and her chundering though? Can I not have what she is taking? Well, there are ways to induce imbalances in your body to purge itself, but doing so is not at all healthsome. For instance, I might have told you of the dangerous practice of taking goodly quantities of prunes and rhubarb to purge from the fundament, but that would have been negligent of me, for as a physician I cannot endorse... Prunes and rhubarb? So I just eat them things? Easy. Uh, but, uh... Thank you, Doctor. Give you a good day. Uh, hold, sir. I'd strongly advise against such a... <sighs> I guess it's worked, kinda. Yeah, he was little happy. Not you again. I guess I advised him wrong. Hey, my lord. I must own, your lordship's visit to my chambers does surprise me, for I'd believed, well, indeed, all of England believes, that you are in Ireland at present. Did anyone see me? No? Good. Now, bid your manservant close the shutters. As your lordship pleases. William? William? Uh, pray close the shutters. Okay. Yes, all of them. And fetch us some candles. I pray the counsel you give me this day be wise, Sarah, for I find myself in the most desperate of predicaments. And the last advice I gave you? That of offering to lead a military campaign to put down the Irish rebellion? Mm. I trust it worked to win back the Queen's favour? Indeed, the parade given to send you off was most impressive. I, I was there. Uh, did you see me? I did wave at you. <laughs> Nay, I do not imagine you would have seen me. So great were the crowds. Yes, my offer to lead the campaign was well received by the Queen. That's good. But there was a fatal flaw in your advice. Oh, and what? this flaw was... Is it not obvious? No. I had to verily go to that midridden ridden Really? Board and try to put down the Irish. God's breath! Have you seen the Irish? They are savages! That Irish... Oh my God. This band of Benborn brutes are especially bad. Forsooth, they sound most fearsome. Now, tis a mercy you escaped with your life and are now back home safe in England. Nay, I am not yet safe in England, I fear. For when the Queen finds out that I made a truce with O'Neill, heaven only knows how ill she will take it. Even my leaving Ireland without her permission will doubtless vex her. Then the Queen has not been informed of your return? Nay, she knows yet nothing of it. I am at present taking refuge with my sister, the Countess of Devonshire, at her country estate. But I cannot hide there forever. Hence, I am come to you this day so that the stars may advise me on how I may extract myself from my current predicament and win back the favor of the queen. I have no idea. The stars advise, uh, how might Lord Devereux escape the displeasure of Her Majesty the Queen and regain her favor? Hmm. Robert Devereux must use his best asset to ward off the Queen's anger, his magnificent body. Uh, wait. 
God will help Devereux if he appeals to the Queen's vanity and exercises patience. Devereux may revive his hopes for a brilliant career and not all is lost. Devereux must contrive a way to make the Queen see his disobedience within the context of their personal relationship, rather than as an act of disloyalty to the crown. Devereux imperils his legacy with his tendency toward confused optimism. Robert Devereux risks being subject to the violence of the law. Devereux may reverse the political situation back to his advantage by having the Queen look upon him as the son she never had. Yeah, I think that's more like it. Hopefully it work. Enacted by officers of the law. Ah, verily. It is doubtless a beheading. Forsooth, I do enjoy a good beheading. Well, it is yes. to be a trifle more elaborate than that. If the queen is particularly vexed, it will start with a quick hanging until just before the point of death, followed by a disemboweling and Ooh. emasculation. Nice. Ah, yes, of course. Where after the gentleman is invited to watch his own entrails and privy parts being lightly grilled upon an open fire before he is chopped into four separate pieces. A quartering, I think you mean? Which, as etiquette dictates, are then to be parceled up and sent as gifts to any friends and family members unable to attend the ceremony. Ah, yes, splendid. An execution with all the trimmings. Verily, whilst a simple beheading can be a most elegant entertainment, it is a trifle too, well, continental for my taste. Why, it is oft over in mere moments. Whereas a full English execution keeps one entertained throughout the whole morning. Though I fail to see what this has to do with... God's breakfast! You... you mean... I am the one to be hung, drawn and quartered? Uh, well... yes, very possibly. I am afeard the only course left to you now is to humble yourself before the Queen. The stars suggest you might be able to convince her to look upon you as the son she never had. A naughty, wayward child who has rebelled against his parents. Yeah, that sounds better than a lover. Hmm. In truth, it is not the worst of ideas. And it might even clear the path for the possibility of... Yes, yes. Methinks this plan may serve me very well. Really? Good. Ah. <sighs> Not sure again. whether your grace has made a decision regarding whether to give Thomas Blagg the bishopric of Salisbury? Ah, yes. Dean Blagg. Don't get it, man. my chaplain look into what you told me regarding irregularities in Dean Blagg's stewardship of Rochester Cathedral. Uh, methinks you said he was embezzling coin and pawning cathedral furnishings, did you? Yes. Well, it seems you yes. speak true. Oh, indeed? Of course, I will make nothing of it, as I wish to avoid the scandal. I merely told Dean Blanc that I could not offer him the bishopric due to various episcopal and doctrinal constraints. Good. Of course. And what problem would your grace wish me to address this day? Oh, it is a problem with my other deans. With each passing day, there seems to be a new dean at the palace gates come to petition me for this wretched bishopric of Salisbury. Presently, tis Owen Wood, the Dean of Armagh. Oh. Since he returned from Ireland, he talks of nothing else. How tiresome for your grace. Indeed. I have told Owen that I'm giving his request careful consideration, but in my experience, this only delays a Dean for so long. I do have to grant the occasional bishopric, or else my Deans become restless. Doubtless, your grace. But after what I learned about Dean Blagg, I must take care to exercise caution. Of course you Hence, do. I would have you tell me anything you know. 
that is, anything the stars reveal about Owen Wood that would render him unsuitable to perform the role. He has lover. Let us ask the stars. Is there any reason why the Most Reverend John Whitgift, the Archbishop of Canterbury, should not grant Owen Wood the Bishopric of Salisbury? Of course they're good. There's a good reason. John Whitgift is impossible to please. John Whitgift should bring Owen Wood's dream of being the, a bishop to life. Owen Wood is a vain but patient man who has God on his side. While Owen is uncertain about whether he will be offered the bishopric of Salisbury, he remains optimistic. When it comes to his relationship with women, Owen Wood has a creative in interpretation of the teachings of the Bible on the sin of adultery. Owen Wood has betrayed his wife. An unexpected problem may arise concerning Owen Wood and some unborn, unborn children. I must advise against granting Owen Wood the bishopric. For the stars reveal that he has sinned most grievously. Ah, verily. Yes. Grievously, you say? I, I am afeard D. Wood did commit the sin of adultery. Ah, uh, nothing else? Uh, Twas more than once, Your Grace. Doubtless, doubtless. Yes, then. I appreciate your most excellent discernment of this information from the stars. Sorry? I must own that Dean Wood's extra clerical activities are already well known to me. Oh. But why? Even my own wife has had a tumble with the man. Oh. Your Grace, I am sorry. Hold, Sarah. In truth, tis of no consequence to me. What occurs in Lambeth Palace bides in Lambeth Palace, as we like to say. Okay. But you are right to remind me of Dean Wood's indiscretions. For may habit be not wise to elevate Owen to such a public position as bishop. Thank you. I do have the reputation of the church to consider. Indeed, Your Grace. I will tell Owen that while I had every intention of granting him the bishopric, my hands are now tied due to various episcopal and doctrinal constraints. Very wise, Your Grace. And one more matter, if I may. Has Your Grace yet had the opportunity to consider the granting of my medical license? Ah, yes, that. Once my chaplain has finished looking into the matter, I shall be giving it careful consideration. Good day. Thank you. Okay, we're 40% in with him. Yeah, so it's sixth received. Oh, we have not received the letter from Ricardo Ferrero, so we are only at five. Okay, I did not see the not received, so we need to work harder. We are nearly done with Robert de Verru and Lancelot Moore, which go back and forth. Hmm. And we still need one more person visiting us, okay? Right, but that's gonna be it for today. Stay alive and see you soon.